Good morning, folks. Y'all, we're going to miss you all here at the round table. Come see us at, a, at service this morning, yes. 945. Yeah. 945, that's when the magic happens. <laughs> you know what? Technically, that's not true, because if you're already in the presence of the Lord this morning, if you're ready for what God has this morning, then the magic has already happened. And it ain't no thing about magic. It's just Holy Spirit filling you. <laughs> And you just being obedient to what he's uh, saying. And I think we're just going to have a time today. And it's going to be a good time. So good morning, everybody. Um, as you see from our lineup, we got a full house today. I almost think about calling Brother John a special guest. It's been a while. <laughs> How you doing? Yeah. Not too bad. Wonderful. Amen. Amen. Everyone, everything all right? Yes, uh, Brother uh, Jerry said that Sister Betty is uh, just waiting for the doctor to come in. Feeling good this That's morning. Good. Amen. So great. Thank Amen. You. Good Amen. news. I told him we'd be praying if he needed us. Just find us. Anyone want to start? God's good. Is God, yes, amen. <laughs> is God. God talking to anybody? Any special word? Any special nuggets uh, planted? Um, I don't know if you saw my post on uh, Facebook this week, but God was dealing with me in the morning and I was just having a moment. And God just running through me and I'm just writing stuff down. And I'm just writing stuff down and I'm, I'm peeking at the clock because I have to be on a conference call at 8. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, and it's like, it's like, 7:53, and uh, God's working on me. And I'm like, "Ooh, well, I'm gonna be late for this call." Yeah. <laughs> and, it, it, and then I posted. I'm like, "Don't you wish sometimes you can just call in sick?" Yeah. yeah. Because God was working on me um, with some things I'll share later. But um, I mean, I was just having a time, just a, just a, a nice wow. weeping moment. That's awesome. And. Uh, I really thought, oh, can I just text message my boss? I'm not going to make the call. <laughs> but, you know, that's not. Thus saith the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord. They'll go, who's that? Is that HR? <laughs> <laughs> Is that Trump card? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a good Trump. <laughs> but uh, I, I've never really had a conflict with work and the Holy Spirit before. And it's like, uh, I'm going to sit here. I'm gonna sit here. So I wrote until my pencil stopped, and I still made the phone call. So, but you know, he he dealt with me all morning, and it was just it was just That's a good awesome. good time. Yeah, just a good time. So good. I think bosses that have been in the business long enough know that they've just probably heard about every excuse for not making it on time, but not too many call in because God's talking to me today. Hey, I'm on another call. I'm on another conference call. I got Jesus on the main line. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's it. We can uh, we can do this later. So yeah. So good. Uh, I had a similar week. You know, I'm going through this curriculum for work, and it's a uh, and it's called Kingdom Advisors, and it's a curriculum where it's uh, uh, focused on um, God's heart towards money. And you guys recall like when you get saved and you begin to like see things that you just gotta get rid of. It, and it's just like whether it's ideologies or just thoughts or just you're, and I'm going through this correctly and I'm so thankful for it and uh, I feel like I was just having one of those weeks where it's just it's almost like you're getting saved <clears throat> saved again Amen. you know God's level of intimacy this week has just been so incredible you know it's just one of those special things just like Dan was saying it's just one of those special moments that you have and um, this week has just been like that and it's uh it's just been good. God is on the move, and it's just a privilege to be alive in these in these times right now. So it's so good, so good. Mm -hmm. So get connected. Amen. Amen. I encourage everyone to get connected. Sister Anne and I have a very dear sister that uh, we've known for. Uh, I had to go back a few years. We've known for. 30, 32 years, and she's been an amazing blessing to us through the years. She was talking about some of the prayer groups and prayer teams and prayer chains that she's a part of, because that's her whole life of ministry, is prayer for her. And she lives back east, so 
She was telling me yesterday that she was on a prayer line this week. She said they had 32,000 people in that prayer meeting praying. I said, that is great. Um, I, I didn't I didn't say this, but I wanted to remind her that Gideon started out with, I think, 32,000. By the time it was all said and done, there was only 300 left. But I'd left that alone. I didn't throw that out there. So is that significant? Well, not necessarily, but God is on the move. And he'll move with those that want to move with him. Amen, yes, it absolutely. Reminds me years ago when I was complaining to the Lord that we went from a <laughs> prayer meeting. It didn't, uh, it, it didn't take long that for some reason we went from about 30 down to about two or three within a few months. And because prayer is hard, it's difficult, it can be. It's work, it's time consuming. It can be a battleground. It can be confrontational, it can be everything. It's everything we need may not be what we actually want. But the Lord reminded me years ago, he said, I can save by few or I can save by many. And while uh, Pastor Fred and I went here praying the other day, the Lord reminded me, he said, if one can put a thousand to flight, then two can put 10,000 to flight. So my word today is encouraging. Just stay the course, spend time with the Lord. God is moving. And uh, I, for one, I want to move with him. I'm not sure always which way he's going and what direction he's taking. But I know God wants to move. God does love us. He mm. loves our nation. We're upside down. But He does love us. He does love us very much so today. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Let me read a passage of Scripture, and you gentlemen can comment on it. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, this is what's been on my mind last night and, and this morning as I got up. Maybe this is what we can discuss for a moment if we want to take this route. Paul said in chapter 6, book of Galatians, brethren, if a man <clears throat> be overtaken in a fault, and that word in the Greek is translated, what verse are you in? I'm in Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, <clears throat> if a man be overtaken in a fault, and that word translated, connected, parallel with the book of James, and you'll find that that fault, that word actually means missing the mark, mm -hmm. it's a sin, missing the mark, not simply says, well, they have a flaw, well, a flaw is one thing, but a mark is another. And sin is certainly something different. So he's really referring to that which draws us away from our fellowship with God. Mm. Smith Wigglesworth said how, someone asked him, how did he find worldliness? He said, worldliness is anything that cools your relationship with God. Amen. Yeah. Man, I read that years ago. <laughs> I've grabbed that lots of times and I've taken that, to, taken that to the Lord and said, Lord, if this is something that cools my relationship with you, then it's probably not something I need to be involved in or should be active in. But he said, if a brethren be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. I don't think there's, if you travel along in this road, I don't think, Brother John, that there's not going to be times when we just kind of get, I don't know, blindsided, you know, by our own self or blindsided by, Amen. you know, by something in this life that just simply takes us and feels like that we're just down and abandoned and out of the race. So God has called us, and this is one of the reasons I am very well, I'm certainly convinced, not just a pastor, but as a Christian man, this is one of the reasons why the enemy is doing his best to keep us from getting together at any time that we can, to keep us from developing relationships with brothers and sisters through any possible means that we can, because his tactics to conquer and divide has always been quite effective. But today for somebody mm -hmm. that we're speaking to today, you're needing restoration in your life, and God is telling you today that he is here to bring that restoration. Brother Johnny, you're talking about God on the move. Mm -hmm. I'm glad God's always on the move for restoring. Yeah, amen. He can take and he can restore a vessel and make it something just amazing. He can take that brokenness and he can put those pieces together. He can take that emptiness and he can refill it. Mm -hmm. So gentlemen, the writer said, ye which are spiritual. Who would we consider to be the spiritual here? Who, who identifies that to be the spiritual? Who's the spiritual that Paul may be referring to? I have an idea, but I want to hear from you guys. Mm -hmm. So what's been on my mind about restoration? I'm not preaching on that today, I don't think, but we need restoration in the body. I'm talking about in the family of God. I'm yeah. talking about moms and dads and sons and daughters and children and grandkids. And their needs are... People today that have walked out of church, over 50% of the church people that left out of COVID have not returned. Right. 50%. It's overwhelming to me. That's just, uh, 
it doesn't mean that those that came and are attending are big heroes or we walk on water. It just means that we understand and we want to understand the value of being able to come together because family, there may be days when we're not gonna actually really be allowed and it may cost us to get together. And I don't know how we're gonna work on that because we've been blessed with such freedom for over 200 years in our nation. So I don't know how this is gonna pan out but I know God still is in restoration and he does that when we come together at various times as often as we can to pray for one another, love each other, provoke unto good works. You're not looking at my notes to open, are you? I, I, don't, I don't think so, Brother Dan, but I, I, if it's the same lines, then the Lord's talking. Amen. That's the heart. That's Amen. my heart. I don't have any other agenda here as a pastor except to have, Lord, Holy Spirit, talk to us. Yeah. Tell us what's on your heart. Yes, Lord, move. He wants to. He wants to bring. I mean, he wants to. You say, "Well, I never. I got hurt. I got." In. We all get Welcome hurt. to the human race. That's all I can yeah. say. And I, yeah. and man, I, you know, as I prayed yesterday, I said, "God, we need healing. Families that have been abused, hurt, wounded, hit hard." But I don't think anybody, Pastor Fred, that's been in this race very long, hasn't had. I don't know anybody here. I probably shouldn't mentioned this but I'm not trying to promote any TV program but we used to like to watch that game show Wipeout that was as crazy a show as I mean it was crazy as could be and my brother Johnny apparently knows what I'm talking yes, about here yeah people are trying to get through these obstacle courses and they're, they're hitting them with heavy water and they're shooting them with these you know different type of obstacles and all kinds of things to keep them from winning like 50,000 or however much it is but yet they get up there act like a bunch of fools if, you, if I may say but you know what we got to run this race and know that God uh -huh. could restore. So who are the spiritual that we might consider here? Hmm. One. The NIV. One. NIV. New King James. Okay. Start at verse 22. We'll pick up on what you said. I want right. to speak to those out there right yes, now. Yes, Pastor. Amen. But not only to those out there, but this also applies to every member of the church. And you just... You just brought out uh, quite a bit there, uh, Pastor Larry, because COVID has hit quite a bit of people. Yeah. And um, I know loved ones who have gone with the Lord. And when I say that is, if I'm going to go, I want to make sure the word is said, he went with the Lord. That's right. Come on. Amen, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the key right there. That's the bottom line. Because so many uh, will just proclaim and say, oh, he's with the Lord, but their lifestyle read other. And so we're all going to be one day out of this body and in the presence of the Lord. Yes, Come on. Yes, James are. talks about kind of a follow-up of what you said, and I want to encourage you out there, hearers of the word. In verse 22 of James chapter 1, it says, But be doers of the word, mm -hmm. not just hearers mm -hmm. of the word. I mean, we, we have to do what God tells us to do, not just hear about it. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. In the mirror. Mm -hmm. And it goes on. For he observes himself and goes away. I mean, that, that alone just goes away. And he immediately forgets what kind of man he was. Wow. And so if, if you're fighting this necessity to be back in God's house mm -hmm. don't forget from where you came from yeah. Yeah. and don't just be a hearer of the word Do, be a doer be in the presence of the fellowship of those in the church but verse 25 says this but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty mm, and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the word this one will be blessed in what he does. Yes. That's right, Pastor. Amen. And we, we all want blessings from God. We all want to be connected to God. But you can't be connected when you're not doing what God tells you to do. Yeah. And I know that many, I hear it all the time, you know, I'm going to get back to church. Mm -hmm. But perhaps maybe Pastor Larry might have that COVID thing. What? I heard maybe the wife was a little sick. Yeah. Or I heard some people coughing when I went to your church. That made me nervous. 
<clears throat> I was coughing a while ago, but that's natural. I'm not sick. And so when we become just hearers of the word and not doers of the word, you lose out on a lot of blessings. And I encourage you out there that are hearing this morning. I put out something new this, this week. I, I, I got brave and put out a bulletin on the city of Live Oak bulletin board per se of our services. And I got some strange feedback out of that. Really? I like that one guy's response. Well, what kind of, how did he put it? Flavor. What kind of flavor do you, are you guys contemporary or old school? What and, kind of flavor? That's, and, <laughs> and, and, and Fred's, response, Fred's response was perfect. Go ahead. Fred. Yeah, I responded. Yeah. We, we just, we're a church that have all flavors. In other words. I love We yeah. do contemporary, we do old. Pastor will get up there. I didn't go into too much yeah, detail, but he focused a lot more on the flavor. And if you're out there hearing, I invited him to go to church. I said, <laughs> no, the yeah. best way I can explain it to you, and that's to anybody out there hearing, if you want to know what we're all about, what denomination we are, come and hear the ministers preach the word. Yeah. I think the last word that he left uh, with me was with, well, with some other individual uh, jumped in and said, well, I've heard that's a small church. How many pastors do you actually have over there? You'd be surprised to know how many pastors we have here at Victory Chapel. We have quite a few. We have a few. And it doesn't require a minister's license to, no. to, to come and, and see what we're all about okay. because we have men of God here yeah. who preach the gospel as if they should have a license. So, yeah, you're out there listening to me. We invite you to come and see and taste the flavor that we have, you'll like it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, that's and that's what you should be coming for. Don't come because, you know, you you like somebody. Come and test the Holy Spirit. The Word of God. Test the Word of God. Yeah. And uh, if you don't feel it, you need to find it. You need to press in and look for it. Yeah. But, you know what, we do have a lot of pastors here. And God is in one accord with all of us. I mean, there's some days where it's just baffling on how, on point, the Holy Spirit is dealing on with each of us individually, but collectively, it's one, <clears throat> and it's yeah. it's just amazing looking. You know, God Dan, does. I gotta bring this in this picture. You're right on on that. But remember, remember this day. I have not heard in all my years, and I haven't been a minister too long started out in 1990 but I have not heard when this holiday fell on a church Sunday and maybe it has every but if, eight years but if it didn't I, I, I wouldn't put attention to it but it fell today on a church Sunday and you can either be tricked or you can be treated here uh -oh. in the uh -oh. could that there be a sermon yeah, yeah that'd be a sermon yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was brave to release me today <laughs> That's good. Well, you know, there's a word that resonates in my mind as my uh, brother's here speaking is the, the word rumor. Come on. Rumors have done more harm through centuries. Yes. Rumors have tore down kingdoms. Mm. They've tore down um, just literally lands, communities, families, and they've certainly done their damage oh, yeah. in uh, the body of Christ. Rumors. And that's just an element of Satan right that, there. Exactly right. Yeah, the opposite of that rumor is to identify it as and allow your faith as you attend, as you come, or you find that place where, where God is, which is our primary desire here is that the Lord showed up. We want to go away today and ask him, did the Lord show up? We're not spiritist. We're not, we're not supernatural type of people. We're just depending on the Spirit walking with us, moving in our lives and hearts in connection and accordance and alignment with the Word of God. Amen. That's right. That's what we are. If it's not here and we miss it, we need God to give us forgiveness and healing mm -hmm. and help us to find where it needs to be. That's our that's our commitments. And we don't have any, again, we don't have any agendas here other than to promote the things of God. We have a mandate. If this entire community turned against us and said, we don't want you here, we're here. This congregation and this building here and this church here will be a witness either for you or against you when you stand before God. Mm -hmm. because there's plenty of people that have traveled this 99 that live in this vicinity that have said to themselves I think I'd stop in there sometime that's not your thought 
That's right. <laughs> That's not a rumor. Well, come I've on. heard this and I've heard that. Then why don't you put the rumor to rest and come and find out? That's right. You're not going to find it. a perfect. You're not, <laughs> not going to find a perfect place for sure. But you will find people that are still working, struggling, walking, fighting, living, giving, helping, everything we can. Because, like I told Sister Anna this morning, at my young age, our young age, this is the last church I will pastor. Mm -hmm. This is the end of my line here. Be be the next five years, <laughs> ten years, whatever years God allows us, if it's God's will, we know that. And we've only got one chance, and that's what life is about. So don't listen to the rumors. Go on. That's right. Don't listen to the rumors. Well, I hear they're too loud. Well, for some, we're not loud enough. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah. I hear we're too quiet. For some, we're not quiet enough. I mean, you know, and so don't, don't listen to that. Don't listen to the rumor. Brother Larry... I don't mean to cut you off, but no, God just gave you something right now, and I wrote on it this morning. The rumors that came in the beginning of time through Adam and Eve yeah. destroyed what God's intentions were. But at the same time, God's intentions were perfect in That's the right. way of bringing us to a place right. that he had to put his plan together. But what I want to say is this out of that. I, I was thinking this morning, and why would... Eve entertain the serpent speaking to her, perhaps because she had already been entertaining his words speaking to her for quite some time. That could be, sure. And the rumors got to the point where <clears throat> she doubted God and fell. Yeah. And, and yeah. Rumors. Maybe it's or or maybe it's covetous. You, you know, sure. you want to be like God. Oh well, yeah, I would. You will not surely die. We'll never get there. Exactly. But I like what you said, Brother Larry. You know, the rumors, that word rumors. I'm sorry to cut you off. Go ahead. No, you're, no, you're on a roll. No, I, I love no, it. no, no. I'm, I'm just, I just think that it can, it, people, we just miss out on so much. Come on. We can miss out on so much. Um, and again, I think about the Queen of Sheba. Mm. The rumor was that Solomon had things together with God. She come from an idolatrous country. She wasn't a woman after God's heart. That's right. Maybe she was when she left, but she came there when she when she saw how that how things were put together, how God was working, how blessed and how uh, uh, provisional God was with Solomon, and uh, how much he, he 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 loved his God. And at that point, you know, he did. And and she saw all the things that were going on. She just came to observe, mm -hmm. and she just observed and she just watched. And and but but when she walked away, she said, huh, "It's." I'm going to preach a message. It's called, I can't breathe. Mm. <laughs> oh, okay. That's what she said. She said, it takes my breath away here. Mm. Like the way that. God is working here. <laughs> yes. <'cause> Hello. <laughs> it takes my the, breath away. Oh, come yeah. Because she that's, was yeah, shocked. But, yeah, that's exactly right. She Even said, by the lowliest of servants. But she had only heard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. she decided to spend all that, whatever money. I mean, she came with, she came with the whole, the whole package. Yeah, that's right. Brother John, she came with camels, and I mean all kinds of... I need all, to see this yeah, for myself. I, yeah, she said, I've listened to the rumor long enough. Now I need to go and find out That's right. if God really is... Is this really the true God? Yeah. Well, family of God, God's getting ready to show up in America like she has not seen in a long time. That's right. Mm. And I like what someone said the other day. Yeah, we pray for our political leaders, but we've got national leaders in our country. Come on. Those are the leaders that are loving Jesus Christ, that are promoting the things of purity and holiness and righteousness and trying to keep us from getting into more trouble than we're already in with God. Oh, Lord. Yes. But for those that's listening to the rumors, no more. Yes. Dispel those rumors. Dads, yes. get up. If you're the only one that comes, then you come. That's your responsibility. That's right. You're the leadership of the home. Take the leadership. You want a woman and a wife that will respect you and love you and your children? Be the man that God called you to be and get ready to be changed. Get ready to be Amen. convicted and converted. And get ready for just an amazing move of God in your heart and life. Yes. Because you you're not going to listen to the rumors anymore. My prayer as a pastor here is, and I'm down here praying almost every other day, every day, or sometimes twice in the day and night, and I'm asking God to fill every building in this, in every, every area. I pray that every church in this community is so full of the presence of God, hmm. so full of people that we got to line them outside and have more than one Sunday morning meeting. Come on. Why not? God is a big God. Put yeah. aside the rumors. Yes, he is. Lay aside every weight. Yeah. Johnny also posted something on Facebook last night going, you know what, I'm going to test the waters here and I'm going to try this. Inviting the, everyone to church. I don't know if you saw, 
but I shared that with the Facebook group. Okay. I shared that with the Live Oak community. Uh, you know, the Pastor Praise Fred the and I were talking, you know what? This is We're part of the community, aren't we? Yeah. Yes, Fred's we like, are. We're part of the community. Yes, Why are. can't we post our services? Mm-hmm. Our community needs to know that we got things going on. Yes, we do. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because I've just been feeling not necessarily challenged, but it's like been given permission. Like, the Lord has just given me a source of courage to go, Johnny. To, uh, go. to just invite because this is the hour. I mean, if there's, a, I just feel a sense of urgency to, to be ready. Praise the Lord. To be ready. Yes, Lord. And so I, 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 I sent that <coughs> as a public message. You know, there's no sense in sending, sharing it to our group because. We're all, we're all, we all we're already, yeah, actually, that's like preaching to the choir. Yeah. yeah we're already connected. And so, uh, I, I, I did that and, you know, there was a little bit of fear and trembling with that, <laughs> preparing that. And then I, then the next step was sharing it to my family, wow. inviting my family. And I know that it's there, there's, there's a little bit of shame in, in this humility that I'm exposing right now, but, um, you know, I did that. Jake and I left to go grab dinner. We came back, and there was a snake at our front door. And I just thought that was interesting. Wow. I would have caught that thing up <laughs> real quick. <laughs> <laughs> we, we left through the front door, you know, having released, you know, the, the commandment that the Lord had given us. And then we, when we came back shortly thereafter, there was a snake at our front door. Mm-hmm. And it made me... Hopeful, knowing that I was heading in the right direction. Absolutely. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, Pastor Larry, does just to uh, wow. kind of get back to what your question was: Who are those that are the spiritual? The spiritual. Give us some thoughts, Brother John. You know, I, I was reminded in, uh, I believe it was John 13, where Jesus is telling his disciples that um, you know, his time's coming up. And he gives them the new commandment to, to love and to everything that he's instructed them to just to reciprocate. All right. And and I think that those who are spiritual are those that are reciprocating that. That, that those that are just carrying their cross per se right. and doing what Jesus had instructed them. And I and I think back to just the, the various points that you were pointing out to. You know, it's devastating to see what COVID has done to the church, but yet it's devastating to see what's happened during this pandemic with suicides, with yeah. with self mutilation, yeah. with with all with you know marriages and, and all these struggles. If there was ever a time that says we need God, it is now. Yes, and and it is time for us to those that are spiritual, those who who believe. The word to be true those who believe that you know holy spirit is alive and well and, and is functioning on Amen. this earth and Amen. greater than ever before mm-hmm. to to say god i will i will hear you and i will do what you want me to do and those marriages will be restored those those who are sick will be healed those who are lost will be found those who are in darkness yes shall be in the light. Amen. Amen. And, um, you know, I, I think that, I think uh, Paul's still speaking that word today, those who are spiritual. That's spiritual. I, I would assume and believe everything starts and ends with love. Yeah. First Corinthians chapter 13. Yeah. Even if we have all the gifts of the Spirit, those are commendable. If we have all the faith to move mountains, that's commendable. But Paul said, if you have love, you know, it's complete. That's God's love. Thank you, Brother John. Yeah. Excellent. That same verse, I was thinking how um, it says, ye which are spiritual, meaning those of you that are in Christ, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. We need to go out there. We need to also encourage one another in the spirit hey you need to go out there and talk to those that are weak we need to reach out to those because lest thou also be tempted meaning if we don't reach out to those um, we're going to be tempted ourselves 
which makes me think of, and this is what I've been dealing with this week, is Proverbs 27, 17, iron sharpens iron. Yes, yeah. You know, even though we, we are in the spirit, we need to go talk to those that are, that are meek, that are weak. If we don't, if we just stand by ourselves idle, we are, we too will get weak ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. What, one of the biggest cares and concerns, as, let me speak as a pastor, is that sometimes people, they find themselves in a place where they have fallen. And I can assume that this is what Paul is referring to in the moral standards. And there are those that you reach out to as quickly, typically as quickly as we can. And we want to formulate that here since we're still building foundation here. But then the, the, through the years as pastor, the big, one of the biggest concerns is people, if they, if they fall in in a way of in, in more immorality or any way, is that nobody reached out. Nobody reached out. Well, sometimes, family, we don't know what to do. Honestly, we don't know because uh, you know, our personalities and our <clears throat> just life in general can really be difficult and, and uh, just upside down. What I mean by that is if we're not careful, like Paul said, lest we be tempted by the same standard, which means, again, like Dan, Brother Dan said, is to fall into that condemnation. We're all capable of that, to fall into that place where we can fall. We're all the, the potential is always there, whether we like it or not. I, as I, I, I wish I never had another evil thought in my life. And I like what Brother Ben Carson said the other day as we was listening. I think Brother Carson's a great man. And he said this. He said, truthfully, he said, every addict and every alcoholic, if they could, in this fault that they've fallen into, for whatever reasons, <clears throat> he said, if they had a stop button, he said they'd be pounding that stop button. So our job would be in responsibilities is not to be in a place of being judgmental. That's what I see also. And it's not easy not to do that. Well, they deserve what they got. Well, be careful with that because what goes around comes around. Come on, we all deserve it. And Paul made that clear just a little bit later after that. He said that God is not mocked. For what man sows, that shall he also reap. If we sow to the Spirit, we'll reap everlasting life. If we sow to the flesh, we're going to reap corruption. So Paul is saying, sow things that are spiritual. Sow things that are healthy. Sow things that are... You know, so for those that have been wounded, hurt, pushed out, we don't have your answer, but we have the answers through Jesus Christ. Because there's no man that's traveled this road or woman that's traveled this road very long that hasn't fallen in some capacity that they felt like they were just put out and not connected with or not touched with. But sometimes we just don't know what we need to do. We're, I know we're all talking here to some someone here today that you're just, you're just you may just pass by and tap into this. But God is speaking to you that, you know what, we're not, we don't want to be judgmental, and it's not easy not to be. Mm -hmm. Come on. Now, we're not talking about those that, that Jesus talked about. He said, we're two or three are gathered in my name. I'm in their midst. He's, he's not just talking about two of us getting together at Walmart and talking about the things of God. He's talking about discipline. Mm -hmm. That's the context of that <clears throat> passage, that when we go together and we discipline, sometimes some people are just hard. They just... Look, I'm not going to do this, and I'm not. Gonna, I'm just going to live my godless life, and I'm still. No, you're not. You're going to be held accountable, and that's a part of the church's responsibility too. And we don't always fabricate that the, the, the best way we can, but we want to. For some reason, as we talk about this, we want to do better at that if we can. But sometimes you just got to get up and say, you know what? I haven't had connection with that church in a long time, or I haven't connection with that individual, and it's not easy. I, but we know what God can do. Mm -hmm. So our point, again, is we want to be a church of restoration, but that doesn't Amen. mean that we're all, we have the love of God and we want more of that. But discipline is a part of that responsibility. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It is. I like that uh, yeah. chapter that Dan said, uh, the 27th chapter, verse 17, the Proverbs. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will, 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 would have heard that before and heard you say it right now. Iron sharpens iron. And that's the whole a breakthrough that you out there are hearing. Let me explain that a little bit deeper. We, together with the Word of God, become sharper in the Word, and you can cut loose from what you're going That's through. That's good. Whatever Very you're going good. through out there, uh, you're hearing this roundtable discussion, God wants to make sure that you cut loose. The way you do that is getting back to the church, getting back to the leaders of the church, praying with them, and encouraging them 
And so I want to invite you guys to come to Victory Chapel. Come and yes. hear a message today from Pastor Larry. And, and come and hear the worship that, that it's very flavored. What a blessing. And <laughs> come and, and, and then we're going to, I'm going to just go as far as say this. We're inviting you to tonight's fellowship. Our church is doing fellowship tonight, uh, celebrating, doing a movie, and, and just um, having some um, finger food. And um, you come and hear the message, and we'll give you more details about tonight. We encourage you today. Be blessed, Father. We thank you for the hearers of the word out there. Now I pray that they will be doers of the word, God, and that they will follow up and come and celebrate with us here at Victory Chapel at 945-ish-ish. God bless you guys. Amen. Bless you, Amen. man.